In this video, I'm going to show you how I take regular construction lumber like this and turn it into barn wood like this. Or this. I prefer this though. Coming up, I'm going to show you both ways. Let's jump into it. So first of all, why would you want to make your own barn wood? I personally don't do it a lot. I've done it before, obviously, and I've kind of, I'd say, perfected it pretty well. Around me, there's a ton of old barns, and they're all getting cut, they're all getting brought down. So I have access to basically all the barn wood I need. Obviously, I got to go buy it from someone, but there's tons of it around here. Maybe you live in an area where there isn't much. This video is definitely for you. Uh, another reason is barn wood can be full of nails and screws and all that type of stuff. Obviously, construction lumber is free of any of that. It's kiln dried, basically ready to go for your project. And another thing is barn wood can be very, very warped and not in good shape. Most of the time, depending on where you get this, this is pretty straight. Alrighty, so first of all, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You're basically just beating the shit out of a board and staining it. But I'm going to show you my favorite methods. So for starters, what I use, and all of this is optional, you can use whatever you want. I'm just giving you some of my techniques. A drill, some small screws, which you actually only need one small screw, a hammer, a wire brush, a chisel, uh, any kind of old nails. I use a finish nail. I use a really old, you know, square head, rusty wedge nail that I actually pull out of real barn wood. A little sanding pad, a sawzall with a longer, more aggressive blade, a jigsaw, and a sander. And then of course you're going to need some stain of your choice as well. Sounds like quite a bit of stuff, but it's actually really easy to do. Let's jump into this. So for starters, the construction lumber you're going to get is more than likely going to be plain. So we got to combat that first. And what I like to do is use a sawzall with a longer, more aggressive blade. And what we're going to do here is give it that rough cut look. The best way to do this is to take your sawzall, put, it, put the board on the end of a bench, and then you're going to run the sawzall backwards so the blade the blades are going to be facing this way and you're going to go the opposite way of that and you're going to angle it one way so what i like to do is turn this one way i point it down and have that up against the board and then run it backwards then what you're going to do is leave this going the same way and you're gonna run it back this way. So then the blade's going the opposite. So it's almost gonna create like a crisscross. You don't have to do that. I just prefer that look. And there's multiple ways you can do this. You can, I'm gonna flip it over. So you can run it quicker to give it kind of more spaced out saw marks. You can also pause it in one little area just to give it a more aggressive thing there. And I tend to like to go a little quicker just because it gives it more spaced out saw marks that look a lot better, I think. So that right there is the best way, hands down, to give your board saw marks. All right, on to the next part. A few other things I like to do is to take some pretty small screws. Obviously this was a one by eight, so it's three quarters inch thick. You don't want to get any screws longer than that. And then I like to just make old nail holes. Screw it in. And there you go. Gives it a nice nail hole. Another thing you can do is you can take that same screw you just used and you just kind of make a one hit with the hammer and it gives it a nice form of an old screw. So one of my favorite things to do is to take an old nail, hammer it in a little bit, pull it out, 
align it with that hole the best you can and just pound it in right there while it's laying down. So what that looks like is an old nail that was in there and folded over. And once we go through and stain this, it'll look a lot better. After that, another process is you can take a wire brush and run it with the grain. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. I also like to take just a small little finish nail and I'm gonna move it over, move it over here. Pound it in at an angle, and then just kind of pull that out like that, just to give it a little divot. So a chisel, I like to use just along the edges because a barn wood you get is not going to have these clean edges. So you kind of want to just take that clean corner off. I'm just going to flip the board over and do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll go over a couple different stain colors. And then before I apply the stain, I like to take an old sanding disc, preferably an old one, and do not go over 220 grit. The reason being is obviously all this character you just created in the board to give it the barnwood look you don't want to completely get rid of. But you do want to give it a smooth finish so for that I use an older 220 grit sandpaper and then I just lightly go over it. Another thing is, if you want to get your edges distressed, you can take a jigsaw and do the same, basically the same thing you did with the sawzall, just run it backwards. Alrighty guys, I'm going to show you just a couple different staining options. Obviously the staining options are endless. You can use whatever stain you like. First one, I'm gonna just kinda do a brown stain. I use this quite a bit on some of my furniture and it just gives it a really nice, warm, rustic look. On the flip side, I'm gonna use kind of a custom stain I came up with that makes it look like the weathered gray look. It's a little different, we'll get to that when I show you, but it's the best weathered gray look I've been able to come up with, so. Let's do this brown first. The stain says to wait 15 minutes to wipe it off. I never do. I wipe it off instantly. And as you can see, that gives it a really nice look to it. Okay, next up is the gray stain. Um, through the screw hole holes I had a little bit of brown stain seep through but that shouldn't be a problem. Might even actually add to it. So as I said, this is a custom stain I came up with and I should mention the first stain I used was honey. Minwax honey. This stain here is the gray stain, either Varathane makes it or Minwax makes a kind. 
I don't like using just the gray stain alone. I think it looks way too artificial. It's just too like gray. So what I do is I dilute that a little bit with a brown stain. You can use any brown stain you want. What that's gonna do is give the gray color more of a natural brown wooden base color to it. That's the best way I've been able to come up with it and it turns out really good. This is actually one of my best sellers for finish on a furniture. And there you have it. That right there is probably my favorite finish for barnwood. Gives it that really weathered gray look and it turns out great. Another thing you can do is I take one of these little sanding mouse pad things. This thing is awesome. It just takes your normal five inch sanding pads and you can just wrap it around there and it's kind of a mouse shape and you can just use it like this. This is one of the best sanding things I've bought. I'll link it down in the description if you're interested. It's only like eight bucks or something. And what I do is just take a really fine grit sandpaper and go right around the edges. And there you have it. And as you can see, the crisscross from the beginning from that sawzall really gives it a really cool saw mark look. Uh, and this, this really legitimately does look like a piece of barn wood. I'm not even joking you. Uh, the weathered gray is pref my preferred method, but a lot of people like the brown too. So if you enjoyed the video, learned something, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you got a comment of a recommendation you'd like to add to this of what you use, definitely be sure to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe for more. See you in the next video.